but most places you look in within the GTA, you see the same occurrence. Today's video, another and more expansive edition of the weekly condo market update for Toronto, downtown, midtown, North York, Richmond Hill, all over. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, this is Sam from Sibiri6 Real Estate and Remax Realtor on Real Tank. As always, you can find my contact information in the description box with regards to my Gmail, my Instagram, and my office, and now my TikTok. Believe it or not, I'm gonna start doing TikTok videos, very, very short videos. We'll see how that goes as time passes, uh, you know, we'll see. But anyways, you can find me on all those. Feel free to subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Your support is very much so appreciated with regards to a subscription and the like. However, as I always say, you're not obliged to do so whatsoever. Right, first, let's start with the larger, more general numbers in terms of comparing quarter to quarter. Let's start with taking a look at quarter one of 2021, which is the three, first three months of 2021 with regards to the condominium market in downtown Toronto, in terms of downtown Toronto condos. And when we mention downtown Toronto condos we're looking at C1 and C8 so let's start there the average cost of a condominium in C1 in the first quarter of 2021 thus far has been $736,000 if we look at the median price it's around $670,000 this is based on 1700 transactions in the first three months of 2021 now let's take a look at C8 with regards to the downtown Toronto condo market in the first quarter of 2021. We're in the average price of a condominium in the first quarter of 2021 with regards to the downtown Toronto condo market was $712,000 and the median price was $660,000. So both in terms of average and median, the average cost is less. And also compared to C1, uh, the number of transactions is much less as well. And this is always on trend. You know, C8 on average is a cheaper area and has less inventory than C1. But there is without a doubt a lot of good deals to be found in C8 as well and a lot of quality condominiums. Now let's compare this to quarter one of 2020. And you have to keep in mind, when we look at the first quarter of 2020, we are not accounting for the worldwide events that occurred and the effects and influence of that event is not reflected in quarter one, it's more so reflected in the second quarter of 2020. When we look at the first quarter of 2020 with regards to the downtown Toronto condominium market accounting for both C1 and C8, Let's start with C1. We see that C1, both the median and the average was much higher. The average cost of the condominium was $836,000 and the median was $726,000. Now, the number of transactions was less. And this reflects what I've been discussing on this channel and the trends we've been seeing. The number of transactions have increased thus far, uh, but the average price and the median price is much less. And this is a common theme and trend when we look at any condo market. Obviously, it's most pronounced within the downtown core uh, because that's where the most inventory is. But most places you look in within the GTA, you see the same occurrence. And then the same trend extends itself within to C8 as well, wherein once again, the median and average price are much higher. Uh, last year in quarter one of 2020 with regards to the downtown Toronto condo market, as we are looking at in quarter one of 2021. Now, when we look at the first quarter of 2021 with regards to the downtown Toronto condo market, the majority of the transactions occurred, in my frank opinion, February, March. Although prices were increasing in January, uh, January was still a somewhat of a buyer's market. And even though prices are lower than the same time last year or same quarter last year, it is no longer a buyer's market and no longer a moderate market. I think it is now a seller-friendly market. It's not a hot seller's market, but it is definitely a seller-friendly market for the downtown Toronto condo market. Anyways, now let's look at Toronto at large, where the average cost of a condominium within the first quarter within the city of Toronto with regards to the Toronto condominium market was $670,000 and the median was $620,000. With regards to the average, $675 to be exact. And much in the same vein, when we apply uh, a quarter over quarter analysis, meaning year over year with regards to the first quarters of 2020 versus the first quarter of 2021, the same trend applies. The average and median prices are higher in the first quarter of 2020 as compared to the first quarter of 2021. However, the number of transactions are lower. Now let us look at more immediate numbers and more localized numbers with regards to the weekly number. In today's video, we're going to look at the downtown Toronto condo market, obviously. We're going to look at 
North York, and then we're gonna look at Richmond Hill. In future videos, I will cover Midtown and I will cover other areas as well. The first chart you see on the screen are the average and median prices with the number of transactions for condominiums based on type. In terms of one plus one and one washroom, two washroom and two bedrooms, two plus one, two, uh, and we break, I broke it down in that chart uh, based on the number of bedrooms and pluses and washrooms. And at the top, hopefully you see that this is accounting for the 13th to the 18th. Now going forward, we're gonna do six days, uh, but the reason we did 13 to the 18th is because in the previous edition, I accounted for seven days to so counterbalance that. And we don't obviously wanna uh, double count certain transactions uh, that were included in the previous video. For this edition only, we do 13th to the 18th. As you will come to see, when I look at North York, Central North York and Richmond Hill later on this video, those figures are looking at the time frame between the 12th of April and 18th of April. And the time of recording of this, this is the 19th of April. First and foremost, when we look at the zero bedrooms, uh, only one transaction where we synonymously call it a bachelor or studio, and it was on the market for 83 days. And I made a point of this in the previous video. This is why studios slash bachelors are such risky investments. Uh, what inventory is available, there isn't that much demand for. Then let's move on to one bed, one wash, and one plus one and one wash. In both cases, when we look at the median price, which is in some ways a more accurate representation of the facts, uh, because with averages, when there isn't that many transactions, and especially when we look at a small time span, as such as a week, where there might be only 10 transactions or four transactions in certain cases, uh, really a higher price and a lower priced unit uh, in terms of sale price, both and also in the listing figures as well, can really offset the balances in terms of averages. So when we look at the median, both cases, one plus one and ones, and just one bed, one wash with no plus ones, in terms of median price, both are lower week over week, where in the previous week, which I covered in my previous video of this series, the weekly edition episode number one, the average for both respectively was 618 and 685. So 618 for the one bedroom, one wash and 685 for the one plus one. So one bedroom plus one and one wash. And obviously as reflected by the chart, we see the prices have dipped with those units. The biggest drop perhaps is with the one plus one and two washroom units of which last week the median price was $821,000 and this week it stands at $795,000, marginally the same number of transactions. However, on the positive side, when I say positive, I'm saying in terms of increases, I'm not saying if it's good or bad, but in terms of increases, the two bedroom, two washroom units saw the biggest increase in median price where the median sold price for these two bedroom, two washroom units within this last week, the 13th to the 18th, the median price was $990,000, more or $999 to be specific. And I always clarify that these, the way I break them down here is not the only way to break them down. Uh, there's a lot of things not accounted for, the age of the building, the location of the condominium, obviously we're accounting for in terms of C1, but you know, there's a lot of different areas within C1. So we're not accounting for age, if there's parking, the exposure, if there's a locker, what level it is, if it's next to the, you know, uh, the, uh, if it has a balcony even, if it's next to the elevator, the garbage chute, we're not accounting for any of those. And in future videos of the series, I will try my best to incorporate more and more and more different ways of breaking down condominiums based on price and those property features. Anyways, let's move on to Richmond Hill, where as you can see off the top, as I previously mentioned, we're looking at 12th to 18th as opposed to downtown. And this will be the standard going forward for all areas. And one thing of note that uh, in Richmond Richmond Hill and other areas, uh, but more so in Richmond Hill, you will see that in terms of the property types, the unit types, uh, there is rarely any bachelors slash studios in Richmond Hill uh, in terms of inventory. And in the same vein, uh, you will see that's very few going forward. There's very few inventory with regards to the one bedroom, two washroom units, not one bedroom plus one, two washrooms, but just one bedroom and two washroom units. And similarly to downtown, this is another interesting trend that I don't know what to make of as of right now, but what you can see is, uh, if you look at my previous video, although I didn't cover Richmond Hill, but I always cover these numbers for myself and uh, catalog them anyways, that uh, week over week, uh, all the, in terms of median price, uh, and median sold price, all the numbers are down for all one plus ones, one, uh, one bedroom, one washroom, uh, and any other way we break them down with the exception of two bed and two wash. Once again, just like downtown, the only median sold price that is up is for the two bedroom, two washroom units. And what this potentially shows us is that, uh, and this is just a, 
you know, a, a, a educated guess here, right? I haven't uh, looked deeper to back up this theory in terms of asking people, but in my opinion, I think this indicates to us that there are more end users looking for those two bedroom, two washroom units, as opposed to a lot of investors who are, you know, more so looking for the one plus ones or the one bedroom units. And those investors have made a series of purchases already, not to say there aren't investors in the market. Uh, however, right now it's the end users more so that are going towards the two bedroom, two washrooms because they're more spacious. And perhaps as I've surmised in the past, it might be uh, due to the fact that a lot of them are being priced out of the townhome, mar uh, townhome market or the freehold market in general, and they're shifting their focus into the condominium market. And not to say these individuals who buy two bedroom, two washroom, or these individuals who buy, even in some cases, three bedroom units, not to say that they're not partially investors. I've worked with many clients who are immediate end users in the short term, but in the long term are investors. And you know, all people are ultimately a mix of both, right? Some individuals buy to rent out now, but eventually move into the unit. Uh, but any individual who ever buys a unit uh, or a property, uh, if it's just to use themselves for them and family, uh, they, still care about the appreciation of the property. And in that sense, there's still somewhat of an investor anyways, right? And lastly, finishing with the North York area, which I accounted for, for as C7, C14. Obviously, this is not the totality of North York, C15, C6. However, the central locations of North York uh, around the young area, Bathurst, Bayview is C4, C7, C14. And much like Richmond Hill, there aren't many uh, bachelor and studio units in this area in the first place. Thus, there weren't any transactions with regards to those property types. And across all three categories, average asking price, average sold price, and median sold price, on all three fronts, the numbers have dipped when we compare it to last week. Anyways, this is Sam from Severe Six Real Estate Remax with Channel Realty Inc. Thank you for watching. Feel free to get in touch with any of your questions. Feel free to subscribe, comment, rate, and review if you happen to enjoy my videos. Lastly, stay safe.